Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Welcome back to the Beer Barn. Welcome back to the channel. I want to thank you for taking some time out of your busy day, your busy week to come hang out with me and to watch this video. Now today's video is going to be kind of a combination of two separate videos. So normally I do a one box to conquer whatever season we're in. Obviously we're in summer right now, so it'll be one box to conquer the summer. And I'm also going to take the what I've got tied on and why I've got it tied on right now style video and I'm going to combine them because what I have tied on right now for summer bass fishing and for pretty much all summer going into early fall is what I would put in one box to conquer the summer. And so I thought it's useless to just do two of the same videos. Why not combine them into one mega video and talk about what I've got tied on right now and why I've got it tied on so that you guys can take all those tools and go throw them in a box and have one box to conquer summer bass fishing. So that's what we're going to do today. Now today's video is going to be just a little bit special. Um, and for you guys that know me, this is not gonna be a, any surprise, but for you guys that don't know me, please subscribe to the channel. If you love bass fishing, talking about bass fishing, hanging out with a big bearded guy that looks like me, anything to do with fishing, bass fishing in general, just subscribe to the channel if you like those kinds of things, because those are the kinds of things that we do around here is we do all of those kinds of things, like I said, but anyway, for you guys that know me, you know that I'm a shallow water fisherman. I love shallow water, especially love shallow water power fish. You know, whether it be cranking, throwing a chatterbait, throwing a frog, throwing a swim jig, even skipping around the Cinco, all those kinds of things, that's what I like to do. And so with the aluminum rig and with the kayak, it has afforded me the opportunity that around me, there's a lot of rivers, there's a lot of creeks, there's a lot of moving water, there's a lot of really skinny, just gnarly looking stuff that most people wouldn't want to go up into or can't get up into that I can go up into and I can kind of find unique and cool bites around me that allow me to stay shallow all summer and not have to go get out on the ledges and stuff like that. Now, is that an awesome way to catch fish? Yes, absolutely. I love that kind of fishing. Deep cranking, deep worm fishing, those kinds of things, I used to do it all the time. And it's just the thing is my love for shallow water fishing really kind of overwhelmed my love for deep water fishing. And I really pushed myself to kind of figure out the shallow water deal, which I think is beneficial to both of us here, right? I get to do without a love, but also you guys get tips that work not only for when you have a boat and a lot of graphs, but for when you're a kayak angler, a bank angler, a guy that may not have access to a ton of graphs, you guys can stay shallow, you can find fish shallow, and you can stay on fish shallow all throughout the summer. So these tips not only apply to creeks, rivers, and flowing water, but they also apply to main lake stuff. And you can go take some of these tips and catch some fish main lake and you know do both things and stay shallow. So yeah, without further ado, um, let's get into this thing and let's start talking about what I've got tied on right now and why these are the tools that I would put in one box to conquer some summer bass fishing. So we're starting fun first. I've got a lot of good stuff laying in the floor here that's probably more effective than this bait, but we're starting fun first and we're starting the way that I like to catch them the best in the summer and probably a super deadly tool for catching big fish and that is going to be the hollow body frog. Everybody loves throwing a frog. If you don't like throwing a frog, there's something severely wrong with you um, and you need to go seek help. But um, for real though, I love throwing the frog in the summer because it is a tool that I kind of consider a finesse topwater. And a lot of people say there's nothing finesse about frog fishing, and you're right. 7.3 heavy rod, 65, 50 to 65 pound braid, big jig hooks, big reels, big hook sets, nothing finesse about it. But this little bait, being a hollow body frog with no rattles in it, um, no sound whatsoever, smaller profile than almost any other topwater out there. It is a way that you can put a top water and get that top water action into places that you can't get other top waters. And it's very subtle, it's very passive, and it does a really, really good job of mimicking a lot of different things, whether it be bluegill, shad, bugs. This year we got the cicadas, we're gonna have the mayflies. Whatever it may be, the frog can do a really, really good job of it. And right now, I've got on a Spro Bronze I-65. This is my favorite frog, um, it's just, it's good like it's really really good in the fact that it's got good components it's got good plastic i've never not had success on this frog and as many frogs as i have in my box which is a lot i've got more of this one than any other one and i have more trust in this frog than any other one so this is the standard bronze 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 bro bra, 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 bronze i 65 is kind of my go-to now i have a shad color tied on right now 
because right now I'm dealing with a little bit of a residual shad spawn. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm kind of fishing the rivers. So a lot of the rivers that I fish are just a little bit behind. The water's a little bit colder. And so we're just starting to get the beginning of shad spawns. And so I've got shad colors tied on for that simple fact. Now I will switch out to green pumpkins, green pumpkin orange. I mean, whatever I need to switch out to to mimic whatever forage that I'm fishing around. You know, if I go to a pond that's all bluegills, I'm gonna tie on something that looks more like a bluegill. If I see that there's a big cicada hatch going on, I'm gonna tie on something that looks like a cicada. But right now I've got the shad colors tied on just because the shad are still kind of spawning around me. But love, love, love the frog. I mean, just such a deadly tool. Um, early in the morning, late in the evening, even throughout the day, I've found that there's certain scenarios, you know, you come up on something that just looks good, skipping it around docks, skipping it under laydowns, all those areas that those bass are going to live on during the day, whether it's the heat of the day or whether you're in a rainstorm or whatever it is, just fishing this thing around and, you know, through those kinds of areas can be huge. And another thing I love to do with this bait is walk the frog or walk the dog um you know open water frog fishing and that's primarily where i'm throwing this thing you know not a ton of grass up right now i'm not dealing with matted vegetation a lot of what i'm doing is throwing it in open water and you know walking it back and forth and what's really cool about a frog is once you learn how to walk it you can almost make this thing turn 180 degrees every time that you hit it and literally make it just like hang in spots and a lot of times that will drive those bigger fish wild and usually when i get a bite on a frog it's a good one and uh, usually it's one of those fish that kind of change the day for you whether you be fishing in a tournament or just fun fishing it's one of those baits that really can turn around a day as far as as putting big ones into the boat now i'm throwing this on again some 50 pound braid um this is 50 pound uh i believe this is sunline braid is what this is i picked some up so some 50 pound braid got that on a 73 heavy fast action baritas abu garcia combo so this is a combo with the zeta v reel um you actually can't purchase the combo on taco warehouse so i will link an equivalent reel down below but seven five gear ratio reel seven three heavy rod big heavy line and you know i mean just jacking their freaking face with the frog that's what i love doing and just such a such a deadly tool i think so many people overlook the frog like they think frog they think fall they think grass they think lily pads, they think super heavy cover. But that thing, open water, around docks, around laydowns, during the shad spawn, can be a super deadly tool, especially when everybody else is throwing popper spooks in those big loud topwaters. You go behind them with that quieter, more finesse, quote unquote, topwater, and you get some work done. Now the next one is still high on the fun spectrum for me, and that's gonna be flipping. I love to flip during the summer. Deadly, deadly tool during the summer, and you guys have seen whether it's videos that have come out already or videos that are coming out, um, you guys are going to see a lot of flipping, and especially with this little bait right here, which I've fallen in love with very, very quickly, which is the Berkeley Creature Hog. The, cur the Creature Hog in Max Scent, there is something about this bait that gets work done, and I think it happens to be that Max Scent technology that's in there because be truthful about this thing, there's not much action to it. You know, these little tails don't kick a lot. They don't really displace a lot of water. It falls very, very quickly, but I think that kind of plays into it too. You know, I'm kind of looking for that more reactionary style of bite. I want to get in and get out quickly. I want to hit a lot of targets very quickly, and I don't want to give those fish a lot of time to kind of look at it. I want to get it in there, pump it a couple times, try to get that reaction bite, and keep on moving. And this time of year, you know, the water's hot, the metabolisms are cranking, and so this kind of bait, that kind of quick fall, that quick reactionary style of bite can put some big fish into the boat and do it very, very quickly. But I love this little bait, but again, you know, I will flip a bunch of different things. I'll flip the chigger crawl, I'll flip a structure bug, I'll flip a worm, I'll flip a lizard, I'll flip a full-size brush hog. You know, depending on what situation I'm in and kind of what I'm looking for and what I'm wanting my bait to do is going to be dependent on what I'm flipping. But for the most part, three styles of baits that I'm going to flip. Something with no flanges, like what I got tied on here, it's going to fall very, very quickly. Something with sort of a flange or sort of a flapping kind of style of tail, kind of like the chigger crawl. You know, it's kind of a kick, not more of an oscillation, but a kick, so it slows down the fall a little bit. And then something with like a big, wide oscillation, like the rage style of plastics are going to be my three go-tos this time of year. And it's all going to be depending on what I believe those fish are doing. Some days they want that slow fall, some days they want that fast fall, and just switching in between those is going to kind of be how you figure it out. Now, as far as hook, weight, and all that kind of stuff, 
Um, I throw anywhere from a 3 16 to a 3 8 ounce weight. This is a Beast Coast Bomb R flipping weight. It's what I've got on here now. Obviously, guys, I've got it pegged. Um, that's just kind of because of the structure and cover that I'm fishing. I'm flipping a lot of laydowns and stuff, so I want it to kind of be a compact package I can get in out very quickly. But 3 16 to 3 8 I don't really start bumping up into the halves, 3 quarters and ounces until the grass starts to get up, and that'll be more late summer, early fall that that starts to happen. And then I've got this paired up with a 4 aught straight shake flipping hook. If I'm throwing more of those kind of rage style plastics or that trigger crawl, I will switch this out to a force uh, EWG style hook. Um, but I'm still running it. 20 pound fluorocarbon, 7.3 heavy fast action air toss combo again. And the only difference between this and the frog rod is that I'm fishing that 20 pound fluorocarbon on here. And this is some cool fluorocarbon. I showed it off in a video the other day, but it is a uh, Sunline flipping fluorocarbon. I have no association with Sunline. I just really like this line. Super strong, super cool. But that green on there, there's a uh, green increments throughout the line. It's lime green. It's about four foot increments. And what's really cool about it is it helps you to see bites. And I was fishing with my good buddy, Mr. Tyler Anderson the other day, and actually was letting a bait fall kind of pendulum in through a dock and I never felt the bite but I saw the line pop because of the green and set the hook on the fish and put a fish into the boat because of that but just thought that's some cool technology pick some up really really like it really strong stuff which is good for me because I do like using a bigger heavier rod and so with a bigger heavier rod you got to use bigger heavier line and so far I really really like this stuff but flipping guys flipping and frogging I mean it's the two F's you know when you got the two F's I don't think you really need much else flipping and frogging if you can't get through the summer with those two things you're in a bad way but there are times that you got to pick up some of the other tools that we're going to talk about right now the next one is going to be either a bladed jig or a swim jig now this is two very very different baits but with very similar applications I have found that when the grass starts to emerge, right? I'm not talking about topped out grass and I'm not even really talking about grass that's like grown up significantly that where you can see it. Just where you're starting to be able to see it or you know it's there, you know, that kind of emergent grass, that first layer of grass. There is something super deadly about a bladed jig as well as a swim jig. And as you guys can see here, I've got on two different shad colors. Um, now this is a thunder cricket without a skirt on it a little menace running on the back just something different a little bit you know just showing them something different not as bulky not as intrusive as the big skirt i'm um, just running a straight menace on there but we'll talk about that here in a minute and then this is a beast coast gorilla swim jig obviously full skirt on there with the menace on the back but both of these tools are going to be for when i find myself in situations where the wind's blowing where i know i need to cover some water where I know I need to be able to get through that grass. And, you know, I love this tool on, say, like a flat, like a grass flat. Fantastic tool. Because with a grass flat, it's a massive stretch. It's a massive, you know, expanse of an area. Now, there's fish all in that expanse. But being able to break that down with a flipping bait or something else can be super, super hard. And so this is a reactionary style of bait along with the swim jig that I can throw. I can cover a ton of water really, really quickly and be able to put fish in the boat while still being able to target cast with it. So one thing I love to do with both of these tools is, you know, if I'm fishing in an area where I, a great example of this is there's a couple of lakes around me that are like this where you've got boat docks. And the boat docks are pretty evenly spaced. And when I say pretty evenly spaced, they're a couple hundred yards apart. And in between the boat docks, you have these massive grass flats or these massive grass lines. Well, yeah, you could flip the boat docks and then flip down the grass line. But one of my favorite things to do is to skip the bladed jig or skip the swim jig around those docks, swim them out, and then swim your way down that grass line as well. And I feel like both of these are just great tools for the grass and or target casting, you know, isolated little pieces of cover. And especially when the wind gets up, especially when you've got overcast, especially when you've got weather moving through, just something that's gonna be able to move, you get that reactionary style of bait. And, and really for me, both of these have been massive tools. It was a couple summers ago that I was fishing again, a massive grass flat, end of June, it's super hot. I found some, a creek dumping into this big flat is all it was. 
and ended up putting 26, 27 pounds with a buddy of mine into the boat using both of these tools. I was just switching between a swim jig and a bladed jig, actually was the Thunder Cricket, which is what I have tied on right now, and put all the fish into the boat with those two tools. And it's just super deadly. You know, if you guys that are fishing in the bank, fishing ponds, fishing in the kayak, able to access grass, or you're fishing a big area where you need to cover water, you know, fan casting area, a bladed jig or a swim jig can be just a humongous tool. Both of these are 3 8 ounce. Um, that's kind of my favorite to throw in both of these because it allows me to keep my rod tip up, keep it up off the bottom, especially when I'm fishing, you know, five or less foot of water, which is oftentimes what I'm fishing with this thing. That 3 8 ounce just helps to keep that thing up off the bottom and keep it going. And then both of these obviously are in shag colors, but I will also pick up which is my absolute favorite, the Cajun Crush here, which does a really good job of mimicking bluegills. So I'll pick up some of those bluegill mimickers as well. And then I usually either run a Menace or a Meaty Chunk or a Space Monkey on the back of both of these to get the action that I want. And I'm throwing both of these. This is a new rod for me this year. This is the Veritas, again, PLX. It's combo, but I'm throwing it on a seven foot medium heavy fast and this rod is is not a true fast action it's kind of more of a moderate fast and i'm really interested by it this year i'm experimenting with it i'm going to experiment with a bunch of different rods this year so i'm not set on this one yet um, but i like it so far and i'm fishing some 17 pound fluorocarbon and then a 75 gear ratio reel which again i'm not set on this is just kind of experimenting until i figure out what i like but 17 pound fluorocarbon i think is super important here um, it allows you to have enough strength to get those fish out of grass or whatever else they might get marred up in but still not bump up to the 20 so you can keep the line capacity especially on low profile reels but swim jig and bladed jig huge huge tools for me this is something that i think a lot of people overlook especially in shallow water you know they think 75 degrees and north on water temperature these fish aren't going to be here but if you can find grass you will find fish living shallow all year long including some damn big ones that will eat that stuff right there now these next three are kind of sad to me because i have spinning rods right i never used to be a guy that throws spinning rods a lot but over the past couple of years my finesse game has had to develop um, not only because i'm fishing shallow or i'm fishing areas that have a lot of clear water but because fish are becoming more and more pressured and so when that happens you gotta pick up the finesse game so first thing on the finesse side is going to be a fluke now i like to throw my fluke on a spinning rod um, just because it is a lot simpler you know whether you're throwing the big super fluke or a small tiny fluke throwing on a spinning rod can be really really easy i'm throwing this on a zeta combo um, 200 size reel i got some 30 pound braid and i'm going straight braid i'm going straight braid to a four aught ewg style hook um, for my flukes and i throw all kinds of different styles of flukes i got flukes i got caffeine shads i got power bait flukes i mean whatever it is you know I, I throw a bunch of different ones but for the most part throwing shad colors again right my fish feed on shad and so i'm going to have a lot of shad colors if your fish feed on bluegills throw bluegill colors it's really really simple um and if they're feeding on something else then please let me know what it is you know perch or whatever it is and you mimic those things but yeah just throwing it on a seven foot medium fast action spinning rod 30 pound straight braid four odd ewg hook and such a such a deadly tool especially like when you're throwing the bladed jig or you're throwing the frog i've seen so many times especially with the frog they're blowing up on the frog and they're not committing to the frog because all it is is a subsurface bait obviously you can let it sink down there get in their face but when they're coming up and they're wanting to eat up and they're wanting to eat that frog they're wanting to eat a top water whether you're throwing a spook pop or whatever it is but they just aren't committing to it like you want them to pick up the fluke and you can have a ton of fun putting fish in the boat especially some big ones a lot of people they like think they sleep on the fluke they think fluke is like a a pond bait or whatever but man boat bank kayak pond river it doesn't matter throw the fluke skip it around isolated cover skip it up under limbs where you can't get other topwaters and things like that and you would be amazed what kind of fish can be living in those areas that want to eat the fluke the next two are not going to be surprises to anyone first one is going to be the old deadly nedley the ned rig 
Oh, the Ned Rig, the love-hate relationship that I have with this little bait. I love it because it catches fish. I hate it because I don't like to throw it a whole lot. But this year has really opened my eyes to the power of this little bait. And really, I have seen, it's amazing where you can go into areas, whether it's a foot deep or 25 foot deep or 35 foot deep, you can get bites on the net rig. Whether it's riprap or it's a little bit of grass, whether it's sand, whether it's rock, I mean, whatever it is, you pick up the net rig and you're going to put fish in the boat. And what's even more fascinating about the net rig is even though, you know, you're throwing a little 3 16 ounce heads, you're throwing little bitty baits, you still get ginormous bites. And it's just such a deadly tool. And Ned Rig does such a good job of mimicking so many different things. Bluegills, bait fish, crawdads, all that kind of stuff. Right now, what this is, is actually a piece of a Maxent General that I got on the back of here that I'm throwing on this little 3 16 ounce Ned head. Um, but you can throw a bunch of different things. You guys know I like throwing that little Ned Ocho. Um, I'll bite down my Generals and throw those. I love throwing the Z, not z crawls is that what they're called no that's the zoom bait the uh ned crawls that's where the crawl by z-man i love some of the z-man baits but just a ned rig a ned rig in a bunch of different colors a bunch of different fashions a bunch of different shapes have you a ned rig box i finally built myself a ned rig box i was never a guy that owned a ned rig box but i own one now because it is such a deadly tool especially for guys fishing in kayaks i found that finesse and kayaks kind of go together like bread and butter um but Finesse fishing, especially Ned Rig fishing in a kayak, is deadly, deadly. Whether it be bluff walls, whether it be main lake, whether it be up in the rivers, whether it be riprap, whether it be boat docks, skipping this thing around boat docks, skipping this thing under laydowns, I mean, whatever it is, that tool right there is super deadly. Now, I'm throwing this 7-foot medium fast action Veritas PLX. Um, awesome, awesome combo. Got the Zeta V reel in there. It's a 30 size, so it's a 300 size. 20-pound braid it's that high vis braid to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader this is actually sunline uh, fc sniper expensive expensive stuff but the best fluorocarbon leader out there that i've found again no association with them just really do trust the line so some 10 pound fc sniper on there just deadly just freaking that's why they call it the deadly deadly if you guys want that on a shirt let me know down below in the comments i'll get that put on a shirt and we can buy it but the deadly the Nedley, that's why they call it that, is because it is the Deadly Nedley. And then the last one is going to be the old Wacky Jackie, the Wacky Rig. Um, probably the most deadly tool that I have. I, I'll be honest, you know, it was one of those things that, that I never thought that that little bait right there, that a 5-inch Cinco stick style bait would be the most deadly summer tool that I would have, but it is the most deadly thing when it comes to summer bass fishing. And this would be the one thing that I would definitely make sure that I have in the boat. And if you really, really want to be like super successful, pick up some max scent worms. Um, again, I was not a believer in scent. I wasn't. I, straight up and down. Like I didn't believe in it. And last year I picked up some max scent worms, started throwing them, won a tournament, outfished guys around me, outfished other people in the boat with me, throwing the max scent general, black and blue, as well as if I've got some laying in here, which I know that I do. Black and blue, straight black, and then, where are you at there, buddy? A June bug as well. Black and blue and June bug are my two go-tos when it comes to the general. Throwing both the five and the six inch, I like experimenting with both. I've not found a situation where one works better than the other. It's just throw both, get bites on both, but a five inch to six inch stick style bait wacky rigged is the single most deadly thing i found for summer bass fishing whether you be fishing grass edges boat docks lay downs overhangs rivers creeks ponds lakes it doesn't matter there has been probably more money and more fish caught on the freaking wacky rig than anything else but i'm throwing a little number one style hook um i use owner so i use two different owner hooks this is the owner octopus hook and then i also use the owner nico stinger hook or the nico sniper hook both of those number one size throwing that on some 10 pound fluorocarbon leader to a 20 pound mainline braid again this is that fc sniper probably Probably one of my favorite fluorocarbons for leader material. It's just such good stuff. And then on that seven foot Veritas PLX combo, it is literally a identical rig to my Ned rig setup. 
and both of these right here are so deadly when it comes to summer bass fishing especially the wacky rig for me you guys i mean you guys know you've seen it i mean you've seen what it does you know that i'm a wacky rig fiend and it doesn't matter if you're in michigan maine minnesota california oregon florida texas it doesn't matter that little wacky rig right there will put not only a lot of fish in the boat bank or kayak but a ton of fish into the boat bank or kayak and yeah that's it guys that's what i got rigged up right now um i got it rigged up to literally put in my truck here in about five minutes load my kayak kayak up and go fish a tournament tomorrow and then i will load all of it back up again and head up to the great state of michigan and probably won't take off anything that i've got tied on while i'm there either i mean this is my summer arsenal these are the things that i'll have tied on so everything will be linked down below go check it out all the stuff will be linked through tackle warehouse go use those links they really help me out on the back end i'll make sure to link rods reels links line line poundage colors all that kind of stuff will be linked down below but as always you guys are sweet and thank you for watching